Welcome to this presentation in the series, Electronics, the Story of One Human Lifetime by David Beams and Gary James. I am your narrator today. I am David Beams, Associate Professor Emeritus of Electrical Engineering. And today's presentation will be about using the One Human Lifetime Project resources to design a bandpass filter. Specifically, we're going to design an active bandpass filter using the Salen key topology. The questions we will answer in this presentation are, well, what are the parameters that characterize the frequency response of a bandpass filter? How do we use the One Human Lifetime Project resources to design a bandpass filter? And how do we simulate the filter with LT SPICE and verify its performance? Here's a frequency response graph of a bandpass filter. One thing I want to point out is typically when we are looking at the frequency response of narrow band filters like bandpass or band reject filters, instead of a logarithmic frequency scale, we use a linear frequency scale. And in this case, this graph was done with a linear frequency scale from one kilohertz to three kilohertz. There are three parameters that characterize a bandpass filter's frequency response. One is the center frequency, or the frequency of maximal response. Another is the maximal gain at that frequency. And then we have the bandwidth, which is measured from the as the difference in frequency between the two points at which the gain drops by three decibels from the maximum. And an important parameter, important relationship to know, is that the bandwidth is equal to the center frequency divided by the quality factor Q of the filter. Now, the equations that are used in the Salen Key filter worksheet come from this resource, the Salen Key Biquad and KHN Biquad filter summary. It may be valuable to download it. And the equations that are used in the low pass and high pass filter design tabs also come from this resource. Now, specifically looking at the band pass filter, the topology that's used in that summary is this. And if you care to do the math as I did, you can get this as the transfer function of that network. Now, the gain, the voltage gain of the voltage controlled voltage source, parameter A, has a different role in this filter than it does in the band pass or the low pass and high pass filters. We don't really care what the value of A is as long as it's fairly large. For A large, this equation condenses into this equation from which we can read the center frequency, this is computed in radians per second, and the Q of the filter, and the gain at the center frequency of the response. Now, there is a slight difference in the way the spreadsheet approaches these equations. Initially, we assume that R3 is an open circuit and we compute a value for R1, which the spreadsheet calls R1 prime, that satisfies the expressions for the center frequency and the Q. And then there's a separate step to replace R1 prime with a voltage divider consisting of R1 and R3 such as such as to give us the maximal gain at the frequency response peak and that um, give us the specified gain at the frequency response peak. Leave it at that. Now, the prototype filter we're going to design, let's say we want a center frequency of two kilohertz, a max gain of four, or 12 decibels, and let's go for a Q of five which would give us a bandwidth between the two minus three dB frequencies of 400 Hertz. So we have all that we need here. Let us proceed 
to the spreadsheet. So here is the bandpass filter tab of the Sal and Key filter design worksheet. As in the previous worksheets I've talked about, the user entered values are denoted by cells with a yellow background and component values that are computed by the spreadsheet are um, in a blue background. Now, notice here that R1 prime for this circuit topology is not one of the user entered values. To design a filter with a center frequency of one radian per second, the constraint is imposed that the product of R1, R5, C2, C4 equals one. And that means that if I choose three of them, the fourth one is determined for me. And so R1 is, that's a formula in that cell. It's not a value to enter, don't change it. And the, the design methodology here, we enter the specified value of Q and then we find the resistor values that would give us Q at one radian per second, with a filter with a center frequency of one radian per second. And um, the squared error between the computed value of Q and the design value is reflected in this cell. And um, well, let's go ahead and start the design process. We wanted a Q of five. Right. Okay. So the with the components that we all presently have, the Q is 10. We're looking for five. We could go to the solver or we could just try manually to see what moves us in the right direction. Let's try 15 ohms for R5. And that gives us a computed Q of seven and a half. We're moving in the right direction. And let's try 10. And wow, we've hit it right on. So we have a Q of five if we choose R5 of 10 ohms. Now, why do I not change the capacitors? Well, the capacitors, when we're designing active filters, we generally specify the capacitors first because we have the least flexibility in choosing the capacitors. And we have a Q of five. Now let's change the center frequency to 2000 Hertz. That scales the capacitors to new values to move the center frequency to two kilohertz. Now let's move over here to step three, scaling for practical capacitor values. And the default in the spreadsheet, the initial value was 0.1 microfarad or 10 to the minus seventh farads. Um, just looking at the values that produces, the value of R1 prime is rather low. It's only 79 ohms. Yeah. Let's try changing C2 to 10 to the minus eighth farads. Okay. And that gives us more reasonable values for the resistors. So R5 is now 79.8. 58k and R1 prime here is um, 795.6 ohms. But with the values of this network, the gain at the peak of the bandpass response is 50, which is considerably higher than four, what we wanted. Let's enter four here in step four. And to reduce the gain, from 50 to four requires a voltage divider of 12 and a half to one, which can be made with a ratio of R1 to R3 of 11 and a half to one. And the other constraint being that the parallel combination of R1 and R3 should equal the value of R1 prime. The spreadsheet does these calculations for you automatically. So we have the design. We have finished the design, 0.01 microfarad for both capacitors, 79.58K for R5, 9.947K for R1, and 865 ohms for R3. All right.
let's put these numbers in an X LT spice design and see how well it does. So here is the LT spice schematic, and I have set the analysis parameters to do a linear frequency sweep consisting of 2001 points spaced linearly between one kilohertz and three kilohertz. That gives us one data point for every, every one hertz. So I've run the simulation and I've used a cursor to locate the center frequency and the response at the center frequency. And at 2.002 kilohertz, we're getting a gain of 12.03 decibels. Say so we've hit two of our targets right on. Now let's check the bandwidth. So now I've used two cursors to measure the bandwidth. And if I look at this, the difference between the two cursors in frequency is 399 Hertz. We were looking for 400. Yeah, I'd say that this filter meets its specifications beautifully. Okay, so now uh, question. If in, I build this filter instead with standard value resistors instead of exact values, how much does it change the performance? Let's try it and see. Here is the filter redone with standard value resistors. I've changed 79.58K for R5 to 82K. 9.947K for R1 became 10K, and 865 ohms. That fell exactly between two standard values, 820 ohms and 910 ohms. So I chose 910. All right. Now, let's run this and see how it behaves. When I run the simulation of the filter with the standard value resistors, we see that the center frequency of the response shifts to 1920 Hertz off by 80 Hertz. That's fairly significant. And the gain is 12.25 decibels, which is about 4.1, moderately higher than what we designed for. But let's check the bandwidth. When I put two cursors on the display to measure the bandwidth, I get 385 Hertz. Now, the center frequency of this filter had moved to about nine, 1920 Hertz, and the ratio of 1920 to 385 is 4.99. So the Q is right on, um, but that center frequency, it's a little, seems a little too far off of two kilohertz for this to be an acceptable solution. But the spreadsheet gives us the ability to try other scenarios. We can change the capacitor values. The spreadsheet will automatically update the resistor values, and maybe we can find a combination that will fall closer to standard values. So let's try that. Here, what I've done is I've changed C2 from 0 0.01 microfarad to 0 0.033 microfarad, which is a commonly available standard value. And in so doing, that produced new values of R5 of 24.1K and 24K as a standard value. It's produced a value of R1 of 3.014K, 3K as a standard value, and R3 a standard value of 262 ohms, 270 ohms is a standard value. Well, let's try this combination and see how it performs. So here is the filter with the capacitor values changed and with 
standard value resistors implemented in the design. And the center frequency is 1,977 hertz. That's only about as about a third of the error that we had before. We're off by 23 hertz rather than about 80 hertz. Okay. Well, let's, um, and the gain at that center frequency is 12.04 decibels. That's right on. So let's measure the bandwidth and see how close to a Q of five we have. So when I put two cursors on the screen uh, and at the minus three dB points, we have a difference of about 401 Hertz. So let's see, the 401 Hertz, can we get that up? We have a center frequency of 1,977 and a difference for the bandwidth of 401 Hertz. That's a Q of 4.93. I'd say that's acceptably close. So if I were implementing this design, I would say that this is a perfectly acceptable uh, design solution to meet our specifications. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap this all up. So put the wraps on this. Remember the link for the resources of this, of the One Human Lifetime Project will be in the video description. And if you find these resources useful, leave a comment, let us know. Always glad to hear from you. And we appreciate your visiting with us. Keep those cards and letters coming. And we will see you again soon in another video from the One Human Lifetime Project. Thank you for your time and attention.